dynamics. At the ship division of the National Physical Laboratory at Feltham in Middlesex, they're discovering what effects eddies and turbulence have on a propeller screw as it moves through the water. Cavitation, as they call it. The models here can be as large as life. Slapped together from slabs of wax, they're carefully simulated to echo the lines of all kinds of ships. Etched with infinite care, the waxen hull of a model trawler is used to determine the shape of ships to come. The action of water will show the lines of least resistance. Water here has its own say in the theory of design. But that's not to say that these marine engineers don't get their chance to do a fair bit of messing about with boats. They've got the most sophisticated system ever devised. Wave-making machines and all. For the technologist's version of shoving a duck around the bath. A radio-controlled boat is put through a series of mini maneuvers. A scaled-down version of several months' movements on the life-size ocean waves to see how it stands up to routine or rough treatment. The ship division carries out research on behalf of boat builders and marine architects. There may be specially commissioned reports on new ideas. The new Cunarder, Queen Elizabeth II, went through rigorous tests here. There's also a program of pure research into new ideas in ship shapes. The tanker model in the circulating water channel is used to measure the frictional distribution of water over a ship's hull, above and below the waterline. Work started here in the days when Britannia ruled the waves. Now some of their testing equipment is as big as the ships of yesteryear. A towing tank 1,300 feet long carries the scientists and all their apparatus at 50 feet a second as they record what happens to their models. The waterborne boffins can simulate anything the sea can do. Cruising down this river any afternoon is a far cry from a cup of tea at the Thames. And these are sailors who are intent on making sure none of us end up in the drink.